that comes from God will be powerful. It will be life-changing. And they asked that question. And then the fifth and final uh, word that was, uh, uh, or, or test, was acceptance. Acceptance. Perhaps this is the most important test of all. Did churches receive this letter as God's word? And letters were passed around from church to church in those days. They didn't have copies of the Bibles in the pews. <laughs> they didn't have... Uh, and so the letters were passed around. People came and a big part of church in those days was hearing someone read the scripture and read the book of Ephesians, the letter of Ephesians that came from Paul, the letter of Philippians that came to the church at Philippi from Paul, but it didn't just go to Philippi. It was, it, it, it was taken to other cities and other churches. And, and was this accepted? As people read, they confirmed and recognized or simply, uh, or, or simply realized this is not... Uh, divine this is human communication and uh, and so the question is are, are churches unanimous in their perception and I want you to see this verse that the apostle Paul wrote to the church at Thessalonica we find it in first Thessalonians 2 13 for this reason we also constantly thank God that when you receive the word of God which you heard from us you accepted it not as the word of men but for what it really is the word of God which also performs its work in you who believe. I want you to take your pen and I want you to underline these words. What it really is, the word of God. What it really is, the word of God. Wow, what a, cl what a claim. This is the word of God. In fact, he says, it's not just the word of man. You didn't receive it as the word of men. It is the word of God. You received it as supernatural. This is the supernatural word of God. And so the strongest test of the five was rejection or acceptance as God's word. Here's what I'm saying to you this morning. God wrote a book. God wrote a book and the Holy Spirit inspired the words of this book. Men wrote them down for you and me today. So that we would have this love letter from God. So that we would know the glorious plan of salvation. And so God wrote a book, and the early church pulled the books of this one together and made the important decisions. Now, I believe, as God promised in Isaiah 48, uh, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of God will abide forever. And so God directed the church, and God has put his hand on it and preserved it for us. Wow. Wow. And that's why Jesus said, man will not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. If God wrote a book, think about this. If God wrote a book, if what I am saying is true, if God wrote a book, if God wrote a love letter to you, then what should your response be? I'm going to read to you a diary of a Bible. Suppose the Bible could talk. January 15th. This is a talking Bible here. <laughs> Been resting for a week. A few nights after the first of the year, my owner opened to me, but no more. Another New Year's resolution gone wrong. February 3rd. Owner picked me up and rushed off to Sunday school. February 23rd. Cleaning day dusted and put back in my place. April 2nd, busy day, Orner had to present the lesson at a church society meeting, quickly looked up a lot of references. May 5th, grandma's in town, back in her lap, a very comfortable place. May 9th, she let a tear fall on John 14. May 10th, grandma's gone, back in my old place again. May 20th, baby born, they wrote his name on one of my pages. July 1, packed in a suitcase, off for a vacation. July 20, still in the suitcase, almost everything else taken out. <laughs> July 25th, home again, quite a journey, though I didn't see why I went. August 16th, dusted again and put in a prominent place. The, min the minister is to be here for dinner. You didn't get that, did you? 
August 20, owner wrote grandma's death in the family record. He left his extra pair of glasses between my pages. December 31st, owner just found his glasses. Wonder if he will make any resolution about me for the new year. The diary of a Bible. Wow, that's a sad commentary, isn't it? We learned last week from Arnie Cole, who's a scientist and a researcher, that it takes a minimum of four days a week to change your life of being in this book. Being in this book four days a week will transform your life. It will change your life. It is recorded in Genesis chapter 3 that the enemy of our souls came to Eve and said this, Has God said? Has God said? You can almost hear the hiss of Satan when you read those words, can't you? Has God said? He's putting a question in her mind about God's word. If I were the devil and if I could do do that, that's exactly what I would do to you and to the church of Jesus Christ. Because if Jesus Christ and his church has no reliable truth, no reliable authority, then where are we at? How do we know? And so I would whisper in the ears and say, Has God said? Why? Because the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And I wouldn't want you to believe and have faith. And I wouldn't want God to be real to you. And I wouldn't want you to be in a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. And so I would whisper, Has God said? You don't really believe that, do you? 